this year we got 92.67, and so I got 43.87 left. There's the spreadsheet. That's what I have left. So I'm just giving you some fair warning. <coughs> I don't know what I'm going to spend it on. Apparently. What can you or is there? Oh, one thing I know. One thing is that we can upgrade communication devices and you can upgrade computers. Uh -huh. And it's a good time to do that if you've got money. So, oh, I have notes to myself. What? You can't buy new software. Smile. <laughs> 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 so I'm going to do Anyway, yeah, anyway, this is what Randy quoted me for a new unit and it would be for Janice because she's got the oldest one. And it's seven ninety nine ninety five for hers, and then um, he recommends battery backup. We don't have any of those. And she wanted a twenty four inch monitor because she's. Anyway, this is what. It, there's his quote. So I didn't know what you wanted. If that was okay to do, or how much is this quote? Seven ninety nine ninety five for the computer. Um, Three eighty nine seventy five for five battery backups and five four. I don't have five computers. Where's he getting five? It's only four. And then um, one hundred twenty nine ninety five for the bigger monitor, which isn't really necessary. She just wants one. <coughs> Well, I mean, you got to do it. It's not well, it's it's typical you government. The you don't get the money up front. They pay you after you spend it on this grant. Some of the other ones, they give you the money and then you have to spend it. If you don't spend it, you give it back. Not this. Now, why, why Windows 7? Why not Windows 8? I don't know. He doesn't like Windows 8. It's still too many. Problems with what he said. As it was everything else. Okay to go ahead with that? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Where's the grant money come from? Uh, public Health Emergency Preparedness. It's federal funds passed through the state to uh, strengthen our infrastructure and be ready to get the ground on that. Okay. Okay, what else did I have? Oh, I hardly ever look at Cole, Kansas Association of Local Health Departments website. But I got an email that said if I went to their mid-year meeting, even for one day, I could pay for it out of this fund. Because there's some preparedness trainings that day, and then there's a HIPAA update for the Health Information Portable Privacy Act. I'm not sure I gave it. So I might go to that just one okay. day. It's in Salina in June. Um, then I found this on their website. I think you guys may have been to it because it says Stafford County and Did you? Printed it. Uh, yeah. You must have got information from somebody. It wasn't from me. Because I hardly ever look at coal. Coal's always politics stuff, and I don't like politics. Really? <laughs> They're really into the legislature and following what the legislature does, doesn't do, and all that stuff. And, and they lobby the legislature for health departments and public health. So I just let them do their job. We pay dues and a call for that purpose. So that's something you guys can have and look at. But it said Stafford County attendance on it. Did you go? No. <laughs> I'll show you where it says Stafford County. Oh, so I don't see it. Oh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stafford County Health Department. Did you go to KC? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Learn that you are the health officer. Huh? Learn that he is. You are the board of health. You are the board of health. Did you learn that? Badge don't say so. Okay, other things happening is we're getting ready for sports physical, which is May 1st. Wichita State University PA students come out and do the sports physical. So that will be May 1st. And then um, health fair is the week of May 6th. Why do they do sports physicals this time of year? We always do. Anytime after May 1st, they're legal. For the next year? For the next year. We used to do them about one week before and fall practice started. That's the way that, that's where the students can come out and anytime after May 1st or after they're legal. Oh, good. So that'll be done. Um, next week is Governor's Conference in Wichita and it's a mandatory conference by the grant. And it's also a combo for family planning this year. I think family planning is on its way up, because people that plan all of the education are no longer working. And I've heard the medication we give out for that is going to go over the counter. Really? So I hear it could be interesting. So I think it's on its way out and it's okay. I don't have to have audits. That's the only good thing about that. Okay, did I tell you how much money we get next year for public health emergency preparedness? 88.14. There's the list of all the counties and the whole state and what they're getting. This is the new EP2 is next year. I don't know who came up with that. That's next year. Mm -hmm. So you can look at that too. You can keep it. See how much people get to do their emergency planning. I was kind of, <coughs> I didn't hear this very well on campus. Myself, after I saw Steve got that uh, tornado shelter, I emailed this Tabitha Malini that runs that program and said, I have funds, can I buy that with my funds? And she sent me back several emails. She's somewhat confused by my request. So, let's see what she said. Well, can you send this? Have you spent all your 3700 and whatever? Dollars? Four, three, seven. Well, some of them will be salaries for oh. now, but not much. No. <coughs> no. Yeah, because that was only $2,300 or $2,900. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that include digging a hole to put it in? Mm -hmm. Now, Brian's already been by my place, wanted to put it on the ground, and I said, I don't have to feel paid. I was just being kind of a smart aleck over things. I don't know how you swing that on the ground. I don't know either. No, either. So, anyway, she's looking into it. We don't have anywhere to go. If we had a full house, I don't, we'd stuff them all in the recycling closet, I guess. And hope for the best. In the basements. Kenwood has a. Well, has look a, into it. See? I am. Kenwood's got a. What did uh, I think they were called? Kept the place warm. What was that? Furniture. No. Yeah, kind of boiler room, that's it. <laughs> and we always thought we'd run across the street, but if we've got a house full of people, you know, it's got, you don't know where it's going to go. And the way the weather's been, it's been so squirrely, you know, it's going to happen. Okay, that's all I've had. Just be ready for some vouchers to come through. Okay? All right. All righty. Thank you. Take my speed and go. Do <laughs> you have it on ice? No. <coughs> Does it need to be? <laughs> Next. I'd like to call for an executive session for non elected personnel, please, for 10 minutes. <clears throat> I'll make a motion to do an executive session for non elected personnel for 10 minutes. Second. Yes, Nina, please. Oh, yeah. Well, Nina, Nina, present. Yeah. Then moving second, we go into executive session for non-elected personnel for 10 minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you for asking. Moving second, we accept the minutes from my last meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried.
Recess. Oh, by the way, come on. Come on. What? You want now? Yeah. Okay. Come on. Want to request that you guys remove me from the hospital or whether they have some surgery and I will be down for some time. Okay. Probably need a letter. I can write. Okay. Yeah. Just put something in writing. Yeah. Just put something in writing. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Right. Sorry to hear that. Oh, it may be good, it may not be good. We'll see. Mm -hmm. okay. I've got to have surgery on my neck if I intend to continue walking. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right, Nick. Going your way a little bit? Yeah. I don't know what you guys are getting ready to do when I walk in. Uh, we're oh, on a recess. <laughs> we're all day here. <laughs> I, can, I can be quick. No, that's fine. We have plenty of time. Thank you very much for that. I've been waiting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're going to really like it. <laughs> oh, oh, ambulance oh. renewal and <laughs> yes, <laughs> and all the all the good stuff. Um, okay, did you guys get your little ID cards? Okay. Yeah, I brought them in yesterday for just in case that I wasn't here this morning. And Stafford has a fire call right now. They're getting ready to investigate if please your homestead is on fire over at Stafford. So, so it's been a busy couple days. Um, this is what. The one question I had for you guys was about the storm shelter. Um, all the locates are in, we're just waiting on delivery of it. I asked you guys, um, or said something about taking it out of emergency management, which there's money for. Um, what's your thought on if we split it between the three? Since it is kind of for all three, I mean in a way, but I talked to Nita and she, she thought that instead of doing that, it would definitely be you know, prudent to ask, and, and probably have to ask because it was approved for emergency management. The only the only reason I came up with that idea is that it is, since we are all three out there, maybe the three. Uh, that's kind of what I'm trying to do is letting all three budgets share in the expenses out there. So I don't know. I think it'd be all right. One way or another, it doesn't really yeah. matter to me. But that makes sense. So do I need to? That approval enough to yeah okay and I'm just uh, there's some capital funds in each one um, 
and so I would just split it kind of evenly or something. Where are we going to locate that at? It'll be the southeast corner of the office. Of the office. Mm -hmm. so, measured it out. Brian came out and looked at it. And there's a there's a tower there. there on the east side. Was that? Wasn't there a tower or something on the well, east side? Well, I think well, there's a paved area. Right? Uh, there's a little bit of dirt. There's just oh, enough. Actually, there's okay. a perfect amount of dirt right there. Um, All right. But there's this little wooden fence yeah. cubby hole, and I think what they used to do is put oxygen bottles in there, and that way when the company came through, they didn't they could come through on a weekend or at night. Um, it's empty. There's nothing in it now, so it would go just south of that little that little deal there. Okay. So. Um, the other thing I have is we've been looking um, at finishing up these trucks fairly quickly. Uh, we have one of the, the five tons, I guess, I'll back up is what I was referring to. The one at Stafford, we're going to um, take the truck 7.6, the deuce and a half from Seward, and um, use that equipment on this five ton. And then Stafford's truck 46, which is the international, will be moved up to Seward area. Um, well, what we found out was that on 7.6, that tank is broken. Um, it's a fiberglass tank. All the deuce and a halves had about the same, within 100 gallons of each other, about the same tanks. I think they all came from KBK Industries. Um, they're all about 15, well, yeah, 15 to 20 years old. And that tank is one of them that's, well, the only one that we know of at the moment is broken. Um, so what I had started looking for was um, a replacement tank for that thing. With these trucks, with the truck that it's going on, we're not restricted to that thousand gallon limit. Um, so I was wanting to go up a little bit with that, talking with the chiefs and talking with Steve. We kind of came up with a, um, a good size that would keep us still a very low profile tank. And, um, but have plenty of water because that seems to be our biggest issue on I mean, the fire is that the trucks always run out. So I, I put together, well and Jerry Sanders put together um, what he would like to see uh, as far as tank dimensions and everything. And it comes out to about 1,800 gallons I think, but if you want to see the, the dimensions there. The biggest one in my opinion is the height, and three foot or three and a half foot tall. We want to keep those tanks as short as we can. Um, and you go back with fiberglass? Well, that's what I got to looking at was I sent out for quotes on, or for prices on um, fiberglass, steel, and poly. Three, three bigger. And then I, I also looked at some ag tanks too. The thing with the ag tanks is they just, they're so much taller. And so it was going to really have to convince me, you know, on that, that height difference. So. Um, the steel actually came in at the lowest, but it's just a regular carbon steel, it's not stainless steel. Um, 57.59, that's not including shipping, and that has to be lined. Um, it's about 20 to 25 years service life on a steel tank. Um, they're all about three to four week time frame. Then the fiberglass tanks were running right around that price to, uh, I don't know that I brought up, brought up the other fiberglass quote. It was 6500 and that would be from Glass King and Great Band, 65 and change. Um, shipping wouldn't be that much from Great Band, we just go pick it up, so that wouldn't be included in that one. Um, those fiberglass have like a one to three year warranty on it. Um, then I got to look at poly. It used to be that poly tanks were considerably more expensive than fiberglass, and I was shocked to see that that has changed somewhat. Um, I, now I did get quite the range of poly prices, though. Um, the highest being twelve thousand, then eleven, nine, and the one that I like the most, but just for one reason, is because uh, the company. You know, there's a few big companies that make poly tanks. They came in at $7,100 for a poly tank. And um, that doesn't include, that $7,100 does not include the shipping. But all the shipping quotes I've been getting were five to $800. Just 
truck break. Um, the poly tanks carry a lifetime warranty versus one to three, no warranty on the steel versus them, except for you know leaks, defects. Um, but they're all the same size. 1,800 gallons, you said? It, yeah, it, it's, we went for dimensions more so, and it comes up. So one of them actually figured, <laughs> figured it exactly. 1,800 and change or something like that. It was what the gallonage. Um, Weiss Fire called it a 1,900 gallon poly tank. So it's it's somewhere in between 18 and 1,900 gallons. Uh, well, there's a that low profile. I mean, it's that's the that was one of the big things. I mean, these trucks are a little bit taller than the Deuce and a Halfs we're already on, but they're still big, tall trucks. And so I want to keep, especially that water height, that water weight up high. I want to keep that down as low yeah. as possible. Um, and so that's when I was looking at those. I, I've seen one of these five tons with a four thousand gallon elliptical tank on it, but it's just a dust control truck out on the east coast for. Feedlot, and also all it does is drive real slow and spray water on the ground. Um, there's a couple individuals in our county that have bought these for their farms, and they're using um, some electrical ag type tanks from I uh, forget the company over by Newton or something like that. Yeah, yeah that's it. Um, I just they just seem tall to me, and I don't know. I don't think, from what I was talking to Shane Resberg, I don't think the cost savings for one of the, for like one that he got, which he got a larger, he got like a 3200 gallon or something, um, which it wouldn't be that big, but seems like the price, now it wasn't $7,000, but it seems like the price wasn't. To me, I, I it wouldn't want to go with that much taller of a tank. So that's why we stuck, stuck with the, the custom size to keep it short. I mean, where your truck's not an air ride truck, I mean, your, your chance of that, you know, we've got two trucks like that, mm -hmm. and one is an air ride truck, and you're, you're not going to tip it over. Yeah. I mean, but, but it is, I mean, what you're doing is lower profile, but, mm -hmm. I mean, it, I don't know. It's, it's, so it's still 1,800 gallons of, right, you know, parts and warranty, you know, parts and availability, and you know where you can get an extra tank if, you, if it breaks, or... Mm -hmm. On the which one? On the shaven tank. Shaven tank. Yeah. Mean, these tanks, are, if this breaks, I mean, this they're going to make tank. another one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's with this APR. There's there's a couple of companies that I keep hearing a lot of. Actually, probably Weiss and or Danco is buying this tank and reselling it to me. Or there's another company, UPF. Um, they have the same tanks, just a little bit different process. I found a tank down in Texas that a company had purchased um, for a fire department down there. The fire department ran out of money because they can't do it, but they already built the tank. Unfortunately, the tank was about three inches wider than our bed, and it, was, it is the same size as the bed, so it wouldn't have afforded us any room to work on the truck. Um, but it was 29 inches tall, and I really liked that. And it was a it was a pretty fancy tank as far as plastic tanks go. Um, Fourteen thousand dollar tank. They're willing to sell it for what he had in it at ninety seven hundred, but still two thousand or twenty six hundred dollars more than this one. Mm -hmm. Where's so, seventy one hundred from? The uh, APR plastic. They're out of Fort Wayne. Yeah, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, all of the tanks, if we're going to get them made, are going to be looking at three to four weeks. Is what I keep getting out of everybody. Um, it's kind of one of those things, I put it off and put it off because we had some other things going, but timing wise, I don't know, I mean timing wise, three or four weeks is going to put us you know, into May, so um, I've been I've been keeping in contact with Jerry and, and the guys over at Stafford on this truck pretty, pretty regularly to see where they're sitting at with it, and, and really that's what they're waiting on, is they're waiting on a tank, and I just said, well, at the moment, we just hadn't wanted to push the tank through yet, so. But um, I'd, I'd like to go with the poly. I like the poly a little bit better. Just one big thing is it carries a lifetime warranty. So if we ever do have a problem, we just call them up and um, 
and uh, they either come down and fix it or, or send it off and fix it. So I did, um, when I talked to this company, they did make the comment, there's certain things they will actually send the tech out to, to come down and repair the tank. Now I suppose there's probably things that they can't, you know, but. Um, the one that's broke, is it fiberglass? <coughs> Pretty very repair. You can repair a fiberglass. Right. It's pretty easy. Yeah. Um, my thing with the fiberglass is they're those tanks all think we're burst about the same time. They're all pushing 20 years. Well, and I just think if you needed it for a little right. bit, you could repair it. And that's another thought I had with that tank. You know, do we do we try to sell it to somebody that might? Be able to use it and make a little bit. I don't know what a used fiberglass tank could bring, but or do we keep it around for? Is it a thousand gallon? Or? It is, I think, in the range of eight to nine hundred. It's a little bit smaller, and it's it's actually a real skinny tank, so it's a tall tank. Um, it's probably it's not quite five foot, but it's it's over four. So it's kind of a weird. We're designed why they made it real skinny and tall. I doubt that you can get rid of it. Yeah. So. That, and that was my other thing. I was like, I don't know who would want uh, an, old, an old broken fiberglass tank. Yeah. But I, you know, suppose if somebody wanted to chop the top and dig a hole and put it for a water source, maybe. But other than that, I don't know. So I, I would like, I like the poly, but um, what do you guys think? Now, is that a custom or is it? A yeah, it'll be, it'll be a custom size. That, I mean, we gave them the dimensions. And, okay. um, they they don't really have any standard tanks. I mean, pretty much they build. This is about as standard as this kind of tank gets, I guess, just because it's just a rectangular tank with with a sump and a fill tower. And um, but other than that, the, the dimensions are what pushes these tanks. So. They do make some like little quick attack 300 gallon and 200 gallon um, standards, but I think that's about the only kind of universal tank that they make. Um, so I guess I would. Uh, well, what do you think about the? You mentioned what was what was the company again? Shape of the shape. I just I Keep paid for seven thousand dollars. There's a there's a cheaper, better way. Yeah. I mean, I, I I realize what you're trying to do by getting a custom made and mm -hmm. exactly what you want. But as big as those trucks are, eighteen hundred gallon of water, it, you're not going to tip it over. Mm -hmm. And I I think we should, I think you. And I haven't seen one of these other ones in person yet. Right. And uh, I mean, the, the one tank we have on the back of that little international truck of ours is at our place at 1,600 gallon. Oh, okay. I mean, and it's it's just the same height as the cab of the truck. Mm -hmm. And I, an 1,800 gallon tank ain't gonna be much bigger. No. I, I think we should, and you can, they can do different, they have different tanks for what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and it, one, of the, one of the other things <coughs> I was wondering on those um, kind of ag, I could call it an ag tank, yeah. that's about all, um, the baffling. And I, did you well, and I they're not that really time? baffled. Right. Um, they're, they're half baffles. Is that it's, okay. it's the way the tank's molded in that sits in the skid that comes up, okay. you know, three fit inside the tank. And maybe um, you and I had to talk about that one yeah. time thing, because I kind of remember you saying yeah. that, that half baffling. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I've got, I can get you a book that has a million different tanks in it. And some of them are rectangle like that, too. Oh, okay. And, and they're poly. I, I, I think for that $7,000, there's a uh, a different option. There's a different option, but just as as equal to this option. I mean, okay. What you're doing is great. I just uh, I think for what we're, we're trying to a point we're trying to get to, there's a there's an equal way mm -hmm. with less money. Yeah. Um, and more gallons or same. Well, I mean, yeah, you could get. I mean, I don't think we paid seven thousand dollars for the thirty-two hundred gallon double compartment tanks. Mm -hmm. And, and it looks like one tank, but it's they're it's actually two, two, two separate tanks. Uh, uh, you know, that would be six. You can look at we've got those down there too. Maybe <coughs> more one. Welcome to look at those. Okay. Um, I I don't know. I I think there's probably a cheaper, better way. Yeah. Okay. And do they 
Do they keep those? Are we looking at some of them? Some of them they do, but they're not typically a week away. Okay, I mean, that was they get them because they're. I mean, it's a standard tank, I guess. On those, what kind of warranties? Do um, you can the 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 white tanks are three year warranty. The blue tanks are five year warranty, and I we went to black tanks, and I don't know if they're a lifetime warranty tank or not. Uh -huh. <clears throat> okay. Well, we can, no, I can, yeah, I can, yeah, I can. And the good thing about this is that this truck's in Stafford, and one of the Stafford, well, the assistant chief of Stafford has you know, personal knowledge of one yeah. of those tanks. Right. So, um, yeah, so I'll, uh, I'll look into those okay. tanks then and see what we can come up with and, and come up with uh, some more pricing. And the swing down by, or I can drop by that big too. Okay. I mean, it's a catalog of tanks, so. Okay. I'll uh, somebody down there. Yeah. I'll probably just maybe swing by when I leave here or something. Okay. Uh, I almost went to the fire this morning, but <laughs> I thought, well, I'll better get up here and get some of this done. So, okay. Well, that's all I have then. I guess I told okay. you the shelter's not in the ground yet, but it's coming. So, okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. We'll see you there. Hi, Carl. How are you doing? Sure. That's okay. Well, I'm nervous. That's yeah. the day that's going to go down in my career history. Oh, no. Uh, I've got some extremely bad news. Now we're nervous. <laughs> Lisa's coming and staying, I think, and Joe's going to come in. <clears throat> this is going to do with about a $100,000 refund on an old oil case. And what I did is just to save you a little time. What, I, what I'd like to do first is just kind of get you guys up to, you want to do these? You can look at one over there. Or Joe can, or Joe can pull over What I did, this is the old, uh, back on November 13, 2007, we had a hearing with the Board of Tax Appeals at that time in Reno County on these three gas leases. Okay, this is gonna kind of get you up to, up to date on it. And, and the, what I gave you, to save you a little reading time, is uh, is the actual order that that I received on January 24, 2008. What it did, though, and I highlighted for you guys their witness, and and it's on two pages. What's highlighted, page two and three, um, kind of what his testimony was. He he he's, he was an engineer, and he was he, he was pretty he was actually pretty good, and, and to find out. In 2013, he was actually 100% correct. Um, but anyway, um, as you read that, uh, these were new gas wells um, and, and so forth, and, and you can kind of see through the recovery and so forth, and then the depletion um, through the Kansas system, it, it, it did appraise it wrong. Um, so that's an order you guys can keep and read, but, but what's highlighted is the main two paragraphs from why the court of tax appeals lowered its valuation. And then what we did, because we disagreed with the decline, we used our um, period to reconsider and, 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 get, and, and re hear this case. And it went to Judge Kitts. And because we wanted to, we wanted to get a little deeper and, and, and explain what the county's valuation. Plus, the county, we go by the guidelines from the state. We were going to bring in the state as they are, as our witness then. Mm -hmm. um, that never took place. Judge Kitts never held a hearing on this. Um, and like I said, that was back in 2007. I know Joe contacted her quite often uh, to try to get this scheduled for the county, and it never took place. I have my reasons why I think that, but I probably shouldn't say it. But anyway, then there's these two letters, then, and really what I'm trying to do is just, just get you guys up to date on, on what you're doing. These are some letters from Joe to Lisa and to Judge Keeley. I know you don't need it because you wrote them. Um, explaining the four year, the period of time and so forth, that, that the case was never heard and that it was time to resolve this because we're, even if they, even if we had a hearing, we would not be able to get this 
occurred anyway. There's something called the statute of limitations for both criminal and civil matters, and it applies to cases that are pending. The philosophy behind the statute of limitations is really simple. They basically don't want things to hang in limbo forever. Judge Kitts was notorious for not reaching decisions. I lost two DUI cases up in Ellsworth County where she didn't render a decision in five years. And I'm, I'm, I, I sound crabby, I sound like a curmudgeon, but I'm at a point in my legal career where it's not so much, you know, that I win or lose a given case, just come on, decide it so we can all move on. I hate the idea of have, having file open. I just brought a tiny portion of the file on this case. We, we petitioned the Court of Tax Appeals, or actually then it was the Board of Tax Appeals for a rehearing uh, back after Carroll got his adverse decision in November 2007 and they turned us down sometime in 2008 and the next step is file an appeal with the district court. Carl says he's happy with the decision in retrospect for Board of Tax Appeals. I still have problems with it because they never did indicate whether they had a dispute with the production figures or the uh, uh, decline, you know, mm -hmm. break factor. I mean, there was... It was, no, it was mostly the decline factor yeah. and with the reserves. And the first one I'm giving you, I have three of these, the first one that I'm giving you and what we did is we actually just put this, gave this out because uh, I wanted to see how correct this guy was that was the expert, and he did do a pretty good job. He was actually probably right on the money. But I highlighted, this is the algorithm 1 through 17, the tax year 2007. This was a new lease in 2004. And you over to the right, you can see the valuations of that one, that one year. And after that, you can see the decline that it did, it did encumber from that. So that's why I'm saying with the history of what we know now, of course we didn't know that back in the late, and, and I was extremely upset with this order, and as the more you look at it, they probably did overpay in taxes, the way the system is. Um, we don't have that many like this, that's why I'm saying this is the first time that this has ever happened to me, this to this magnitude on the valuation part. but. And the reason I'm here is because I wanted to explain when you get this $100,000 refund, um, it, it, it's pretty sickening. Uh, on the second page on this one, this here one will be refunded 57296 And I thought you would like to know on the last, on the third page, they, their total tax bill was 65835 That will give you an idea on what they're going to pay and what they're going to get back on this. Um, and, and, and as you can see the last year it's just it's just, it's just not real good. The Drew one through eight. Uh, it was a new lease in two thousand and six and as you can see what happened in, in the two thousand and ten and forward this is actually shut in on this particular one. Um, the refund on this would be thirty-five thousand one hundred forty-six. The total taxes on it was thirty-eight thousand nine hundred eighty-four. On this one here, and then the third one in this nightmare. Uh, once again, it was a buyer of one through eighteen. It was a new lease in two thousand six, uh, and, and in two thousand. Can't, they probably should have shut it in, but they waited until 2011, and it's and it's shut in currently. Actually, the refund on this one was minus oh, it was a refund of five thousand eight hundred forty-seven dollars. The total taxes was six thousand two hundred eighty-four. I left the I left the best one for last. <laughs> <laughs> so what get worse as we went on? How come there's still a value on them after it's shut in? Equipment. So, so we're taxing the equipment and that's it. Because they're not a band at mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I have and, and I don't know 
if Lisa can fill in on the procedures now from here. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and, and uh, start the, we'll go ahead and run the refund through to Tanita, and then she'll go from there. And then I didn't know if Lisa wanted to kind of fill in where she from, at. From my side, I've heard situations, and I'll probably have to work with the auditor some, and you might be able to help me too, Joe, I don't know. But if there's not enough, the good thing is we're going into second half tax payments right now. So hopefully there'll be enough money for this taxing entity to fund it. The bad news is if there's not, I don't know if I can really issue the refund until there's money available. Because if you have a negative balance in a fund, it is a budget cash, violation. Cash basis. So I'm going to have to somehow figure out if we have enough money in this taxing entity, which is Lincoln Township, to pay for that. But the good thing is maybe there's enough second half taxes where that's where the problem's going to be. So they may have to wait for the refund for a while, and then that's just going to accrue interest. Now, I think the interest, I'll have to go back clear to this. Yeah, see, when there's going to be a lot of interest. When, when we got the bad news initially for the Board of Tax Appeals, this is not my handwriting here. I think it's either probably Carl's. Mm -hmm. Somebody sat down and calculated what the refund was, and you know, I just assumed that, well, there. This, this outfit's getting a refund check in 2008 for this amount. Apparently that never occurred. Mm -hmm. So we're paying interest from 2007? Two, yeah. And, and I just, when I saw that, that somebody had calculated the refund, I just took the next step, which was, oh, well, you know, you know we, we had to refund that back, and, you know, it's certainly worth fighting over, but uh, uh, for some reason, you know, you know, I'm not sure why I'm not pointing the finger at anybody, uh, that didn't happen, and only after I got a letter from the attorney for the other side that I sent a letter to Lisa saying, what did they pay, and did we ever give them a refund? And the answer is they paid in full based upon our pre-BOTA figure, and uh, uh, we never cut a refund check, so... By the, by the way, I actually was able to show I did pass algebra in high school. <laughs> yeah, I, I still, to this day, I, I just reread the Board of Tax Appeals decision. They still don't identify a, a present worth factor. They, by implication, they're suggesting it's you know, the taxpayers, but they don't say so in so many words. I mean, in other words, we had our, we did Carl's formula, uh, oil company or gas company's formula. But their decision, they never said what formula they were using. They kind of suggested they'd use the taxpayer without saying same. And also the thing that got me was taxpayers were using a different production figure than what Carl had. You're always using production from previous year. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that, that's inexplicable. But I digress. I mean, that the battle's over. We lost. But uh, I kind of wish we would have cut a refund check some years back and saved us all that interest. Well, and another thing, this is going to hit the township. They, they may be in a bind now for the rest of the year because they're not going to get the money they budgeted. Yeah, they may have to apply for a little more. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know how much that will affect the school. So, so it, it will which, have a ripple which, effect. Which, which USD is this? I don't, Lincoln Township. That would be Maxwell. Maxwell. So what did Judge Keeley say in response to this letter? Has it? Well, he, he didn't say a whole lot. <laughs> but see, that's part of the problem all these years is yeah. we, 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 we went through the procedures because I, we didn't agree with that order that I made you a copy of. But you can't make the courts set a hearing. And, and, when, and when Kitts took her whatever periodic leaves of absence to disappear for three or four months, I was kind of hoping to get Judge Bennington to take the file and run with it. Uh, letter to Judge Bennington back in 2009. The other attorney didn't have a care about who heard the case, but Kitts, is a, she was very possessive of her files. Not that she did anything with certain of her files, but she was very... I, 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 I'm, I'm mild. If you think I like really am harsh in my criticism of Judge Kitts, 
I will humbly submit that I am mild manner compared to Richard Brown and or Tom Bershaw and, and or Rod Lyons. First, I can tell you. Uh, up north of the uh, radium and sewer. Yeah, it is Maxville right. it's so, School yes. District. Okay, and, you know, this is on the township board up there. Greg Mayer, Brian Antunes. Yeah, just, yeah, just, uh, but, you, but I'm thinking Maxwell though is a fairly healthy tax base. Maxwell School, yes. Yeah. yeah. So they may, they may be a. <laughs> but, but I know the township, it will. Yeah, Lincoln Township. Tom Treadwell, definitely. Probably. And maybe not, I don't know. I know I would be. Just looking at the tax statement, the township on this one got seventy-four hundred dollars. Schools district ninety-seven hundred. There's library and cemetery, and uh, oh, another thirteen thousand for school general. Fund. Yeah. So, just on that one tax statement, that fifty-seven thousand is going to be baited off of a sixty-five thousand. You know, that's going to be that's going to be a hit. And I mean, oh, the county too, as far as that goes. Unfortunately, not. <laughs> then we'll pay you next year. <laughs> They probably thought we've 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 been saying that for since two thousand eight. Yeah. 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 I'm surprised they didn't pipe up earlier. Yeah. Being the oil, the gas company. Mm -hmm. Have they been after us since two thousand eight? Mm -hmm. Not not me, they have it. Wow. That's pretty amazing. I don't know if both, both myself and Mr. Kennedy, the gas company's attorney, submitted briefs. I mean, it was there to be decided on. I mean, it wasn't like, uh, gee, nobody showed up with any you know, evidence or argument. It was one of those deals where you have, uh, I, I, I'm sure somewhere in the DSM-4 or DSM-5, that's a Diagnostic Statistical Manual of the American Psychiatric Association. There's a word describing people who are unable to reach decisions. I forget what it is. <laughs> it's just too bad you no, It's a fancy word. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa Milton. Don't oh, ask my daughter. You just want to make sure you make the right decision. That's all it is. You know, I, I don't get, again, I'm at the point where I kind of make the decision and then I don't worry about well, that's it. True. Yeah. We'll work with what we so basically yeah. the you, problem was the big production and then it declined off. And then it actually ceased. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. In other words, the first year was a banner year for production. Yeah. In the way our system, you know, it does look at the reserves and it looks at that prior year production, and and then with no decline, because as you can see, they, they didn't get a decline. Right. Uh, was an extremely high tax payment for that year, and they never appealed. You know, and if you know, it's just this one year. Yeah. Uh, as you can look in 2008, and <coughs> we never there was not a problem because we, the decline took into account for it. And, and Carl wasn't inventing his own methodology. Basically, he was going off of this wonderful manual. But that's why we were going to have the state as our mm -hmm. uh, to come testify for us as our star witness. But that never got that never happened. happened. It was there. Well, we actually, the state did testify. I mean, you know, this this was you know well, submitted in evidence, but you know, it's not exactly exciting reading. Yeah. So I apologize. I mean, um, well, but you think you did everything you could do, and there's no guarantee either one had kids even right. made a decision. Right. But the problem was, as the case just took, took on a life of its own, nothing happening. Um, you know, we, you know, basically made it more expensive, more mm -hmm. expensive a refund than would have been if we cut a check. Right now. Yeah. 
got how much interest is on it now. Lisa will calculate that. She's actually, you know, when they send them in here, will the interest be on that? No. The print or it won't figure until I actually process the abatement. <laughs> then it'll figure the interest in. But I'm not even going to process my approval until I know I have enough money to cover it. Because when I get approved, then it's going to cut a check. It's all does the program does it all. So I can't even hit approve on the final process of the abatement till I know that there's money to cover it in so those funds. How do you know how much money you got from your second I, I, I'm going to have to call May, the programmers and have them. Is it May 10 or May 20 when the payments start May, coming in? May 10. May 10. 10. Yeah. So we're getting second Close. half tax payments. It's probably, well, I, I just don't know. Sometimes these little entities like the cemetery or the, that uh -huh. they don't have much room to take a, a hit either. That's the, my whole thing. I'll say that something they should kind of communicate to the township, the school districts, and what's about to happen before we say, oh, by the way, I mean, definitely the township. Yeah. That way we kind of figure out a date and get it cleaned up. And Do you want me to send a letter to the township? Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm writing notes to myself, letter to Kennedy, who's the attorney, because they're signing plan of look. You know, because cash basis law, we can't even begin to cut your check until after, you know, right. second half starts rolling in circa May 10 through. Well, June 5th is my distribution date, okay. so, but if there's not money there, they won't get a check until there's well, money yeah, to. And, and all, yeah. also because it's actually three checks. Right. You know. Well, you know, we might be able to do one, one or two. One, that's right. That's maybe right. not the, mm -hmm. what was the big one? Yeah. Yeah. We'll Osborne, just have to. Osborne was a big one. Mm -hmm. And a letter to uh, Lincoln Township. Okay. Yes. Basically, so don't be planning on your <laughs> fruit, <laughs> road improvement <laughs> projects. Don't buy a mini road, maybe. Yeah. In the school of fruit. Yeah, you better, yes, you better get the one. I would, you better check it out, but I wouldn't think that would have, wow. there's enough other sources for you know. But you better check it out. Mm -hmm. I'll say, I'd get it, send it to me. Yeah. It's a heads up. Yeah, it would hurt to tell us about it. Oh, is that school district? State, cemetery, library, school district, county, fire district, school district, township. Library is that South Central. Now, we can't ask for that money back from the entity, can we? If there's not enough money, or you no, no. just we can hold it just until just there's enough. The so-called new money is what we take it out of. I have heard cases you go back to the entity for the money because they're basically oh. borrowing from the county. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Surprise. Yeah. So the, all, three of these, exactly. all three of these are yeah, in Most of these entities, yeah. they spend 99% of what they take in. Very few. In Kansas, very seldom is it a government, government entity sitting on a pile of cash. I mean, yeah. Well, even if they do have reserves, I don't know, can they transfer it back to their general? Or, you know, if they transfer it in there from their general, they can transfer it back yeah. to the general. It's just like us. Like, if they had money in capital outlay, they could turn it into where it came from. If it came that. from their general fund, they can no. transfer it back out to that fund. Okay. So if they had transferred over the years, they could transfer that back. Okay. You could check out the Lincoln Township thing, couldn't you? Or not? What they have? The reserves? Or no? I have no idea. Yeah. They Hopefully, they have it. Hopefully they got something. Until they submit the report. Books. Yeah. I mean, I have their end report from last year. Well, thank you, Nita, for getting me the ambulance figures, or do I need to thank Misty Blakesley? <laughs> well, here, here, changing the subject, I'll be it briefly. Uh, you know, we I'll have all these. Are you done? That's all I have, then. Yeah. For, yeah. 
I changed my schedule for <laughs> We say you only got five minutes, Carl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Carl. We, we have all these people who uh, run up ambulance bills and don't pay them, which, as we've discussed, what the last two or three commission meetings. I came up with an idea of cross-checking some of these people, their names against a criminal or traffic docket to see if they you know, were doing something unlawful which precipitated their ambulance ride. And sure enough, I came up with about four or five hits. So uh, as we convict these people, and I'm not guaranteeing we'll convict them all, but as we convict them, I'm putting as a condition of, you know, sentence they need to pay up. So that's what we did for this Rebecca Adami. She owes us $448.50. That's remaining after insurance. And then this other guy who I haven't convicted yet, but hopefully I will, Rodney Fox, $540. But they're, the Misty's waiting on a possible Medicare payment. So, but, but sometimes that's the best leverage you can get is if, you know, pay or mm -hmm. arguably go to jail. <laughs> a little different than a civil lawsuit. But, because, uh, yeah, you gave me that list which I sensed have misplaced. It's really long, but I was looking at it, so I can recognize some of these names. That's familiar, huh? <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do with Misty Blakesley is kind of Good idea. Sounds good. Well, yeah. see, if you, if you levy a fine against uh, criminal defendants, all that money goes to the state. <coughs> None of it stays local. Indeed, from, well, you know, take your typical, like, DUI or something, because, you know, you're talking about usually about a 1200 buck fine plus uh, $98 court costs. Of that 13 $1,400, only $4 stays local. Uh, the county law library gets a dollar, a dollar goes to the sheriff's account or you know, law enforcement account with KLETC, that's at Academy and Yoder. A dollar goes to me as a prosecuting attorney training fund. I'm thinking a dollar goes to the clerk of court to do you know, whatever. But, I'd say the $1,400, $4 stayed here. We did the heavy lifting. We obviously paid for the prosecution. If the defendant didn't retain his her own attorney, we paid for their court appointed attorney, us locals. But all the money collected goes to the people. <coughs> I can tell you some other weird splits, but uh, uh, one thing I've noticed, it's not so bad here, because they never did have that much of a traffic docket, although it's expanding. But yeah. you can see with the highway patrol, while they won't admit it, if you can count, you can see where they're writing more citations. And that's a, basically a revenue raising device. And that money goes to the state too. Yeah. <laughs> because you're, you're seeing one, more traffic cases and two more charges in each traffic case. For example, they've reformatted their ticket. It used to be you could write a total of two charges per ticket. Now it's up to six. They have boxes. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's little. I mean, I'm not, you know, and, and he he likes to fill out all six boxes. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially with some people. <laughs> okay. I would like to request a ten-minute uh, client attorney executive session. Favor say aye. Aye. Motion carried. Ten minutes. Amy Clawson is is uh, eligible for a salary increase, and Amy does a good job. I uh, I would recommend that she 
get the salary increase from range 4-3 to range 4, step 4. Okay. Yes, if I can. I make a motion we increase uh, Amy Clausen from uh, range 4, step 3 to range 4, step 4. Second. The motion then made and second we increase Amy Clausen from range 4, step 3 to range 4, step 4. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Console in yet? No, I haven't had no. it in yet. Ordered it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to. He's supposed to be here Friday. So hopefully he will. Be. Yep. And I haven't heard anything on the truck. I'm gonna no. call him again. Let me see. Haven't got the vest yet. You're just smoking. <laughs> what well, seems to be the problem? <laughs> You got me. It's not in yet. That's what did they say? How long did they tell you? That you on the I'm about this. Oh, they said it could be a month to six weeks. Do they have to tailor it? Yeah. So they are custom fit. Mm -hmm. yeah, one size fits all. Yeah. How long do they want to have? Five years is the shelf life. We had two of them that were over seven. And who knows that? I mean, they may last 15, but we don't want to take a chance. Want to take one? One good one. Yeah. You probably ought to have one. Oh, yeah. And I did get your letter. Which one? Your, your last letter about the fire rush. Yeah. But uh, see, see, what I do with poor sheriff here is, is I, I shove stuff under his door. <laughs> and then I tell him unless he responds promptly, I'm going to start painting on the wall this way to the sheriff's office. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty prompt, though. Yeah. Well, that was an inter interesting collection of firearms. Mm -hmm. I think you guys were pretty darn lucky. I would say so, yeah. This, this is May of 2012, where we had a whole crew from basically Hutchinson over here stealing stuff and trading stolen stuff for meth and they had various guns with them. One of them actually waved a gun around Mr. Pelham. Mm -hmm. Mr. Pelham will get out of prison, I believe, sometime in 2019 if he's a good boy. I may be retired by then, I may not. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, still, I still think Boyle should have shot him. I, I hate to sound so bloody, but you know, it, 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 it's. <laughs> I think if. Think about it, recess. Thank you, recess. We don't have anything. Is there anything else? No. Okay, we're adjourned.